everyone's road is different but to as long as you have your aim your dream you're ready to sacrifice anything for that i always believe you'll make it Andre, how are you doing? I'm okay, and you? I'm very well. Thank you for for being here. You're welcome. Um, just to get us going, Andre, how does dealing with expectation link into modern day football? I think um, in any sports we do, there's a lot of expectations. Um, sports with fans, people around, um, people loving the sport, the game of football gives you always expectations i think in any division when you look at it that way um the expectations will always always be there but it gets to a point where there are different you know levels of of expectations or the the urgency becomes really really high and important and i think um growing up my my point of view to that is um getting into football you you get into this game as as a young boy, right? Um, you love it. You have the passion. You have everything that that drives you to to play football. You remember the games you're watching on TV, uh, or the players, the former players, da 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 da. So that's I think the first drive. Um, get in. Okay, my dad was a great player, so let's say I was kind of born into it. And then um, you realize I was getting. Higher, not even yet being a professional, even when you get to the academy and you're 15, 16, you realize the pressure is starting to, to mount because people signing their first professional contract at 17, 18, 19. Everyone's road is different, but you know, you still want to get there. So you, you, you start to realize like the pressure is mounting there and you need to be strong, you need to be tough. And then when you get to that professional contract, and then you look at it and you're like, oh, I'm in the first team and you see all these players ahead of you and you're thinking, when am I going to get in? So all that is part of it. Then the real expectations come. You know, that's people expecting you to perform, people expecting you to be always good. One bad game and it's the end of the world and da, da, da. But I just feel that um, you need to be calm. You need to have your aim your goal which is usually to win the game you can't you know change the fact that there will be pressure the pressure is there but it's how do you deal with it how do you relate to it how are you able to to be at home the night before or in your hotel room in camp and just relax and see things clearly i think um i grew up into that so I was always under pressure from my young age, always under pressure. I must say the pressure that was ridiculous. Um, so I think growing up into it, you can't say it's easier to learn, but it's something that becomes part of you. And others who bring the pressure along the line as they're becoming better players, more known, etc., people expect much more. I had expectation on me already because of my dad. So that was difficult to to be fair, very difficult, but I had to, I wouldn't say work harder because I was working hard, but I just had to be able to deal with it and not focus on that and just be able to play my game, which was not very easy at the start because even when you look at the newspapers, you can score a goal and you'll be written the son of da 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 scored, then they write your name after. So it was a bit difficult, but I had one name was to make my name. And I was able to to do that. And it just took hard work. It took determination. A lot of criticism coming, hitting you left, right, center. Um, when you had the dad who was the best African player of all time, I think you, you should realize that you're going to have naturally people who are jealous of you without you having done anything to them. So you have to be able to to deal with that and and take it and be even stronger. And I think um, 
I went through it really well. But for any, honestly, any young guy coming out from his dad's, you know, shadows or the pressure, you know, we have one life. We live one life. Um, you just need to do what you know how to do best. Stay calm. Look at your performance, your game, what you can improve. Focus on the player you're going to play against. And you, you'll be okay. It's sitting here saying that it's easy. But it is the reality. It, it is what it is. And you need to calm down, focus and look at what it is. It's 11 players on the pitch. Sometimes the pressure is really high. And you can't take it away, but you need to do what you have to do. And that's how you can get to, to the highest level if you can deal with pressure. I think the players who can't deal with pressure growing up can't make it to the highest level. Some players are not as good as others, but they can deal with the demands, they can deal with pressure and they're able to, to get to the highest level because they have the nerves to to control their their emotions, you know, on the pitch and off the pitch before and after the game. They, uh, you've touched on it a couple of times there, but for, for anybody who isn't aware or doesn't know, um, I mean, your dad was, was three-time African Football of the Year, like, is, like an absolute superstar. Um, your uncles were footballers. Um, growing up, did you feel like, were people expecting you to be a footballer or did you want to be? I wanted to be a footballer. Um, well, I grew up like how my kids are now growing up with me, right? So they see me going playing football, etc. So I loved the game already um, when I was young and I wanted to play football. My dad wasn't too keen because he knows how difficult it is. He knows the pressure around there and and stuff. But as soon as I decided that I wanted to play, you know, I had the support, I had the backing and um, he was supporting me every time. But my uncles and my dad's brothers and everyone who's played, like a whole family who's played football, were expecting me to do a lot, you know, was expecting me to to be able to succeed at the highest level, to, to play for the Ghana national team, to, you know, a lot of things. So it was uh, a good thing, but also there's a lot of pressure on that because you know that everyone is just looking at you and saying he has to succeed. How, um, how old were you when you were aware of that pressure? 12. So 11, very 12. young. Yeah, yeah very, very young. Because young, anytime you play football in Ghana or whatever, can you be like your dad? Can you play like your dad? And that was what everyone saying. And I was, I was left footed like him. I am left footed like him, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, can you be like your dad? Can you play like your dad? Can you be able to do what he did in the game? Can you, that was it the whole time. So I was already 11, 12 and that was the questions coming. You how, know, how did you manage to, to deal with that pressure at, at that age? Cause that's tough. It is, it is tough. But uh, my dad is a tough person, especially when it comes to football very tough so he doesn't um respect age I feel more or less he's like if you want to play football that's what you're going to go through if you can't deal with it now then you will never be able to deal with it and that's how I kept on going so it was a challenge for me to always prove to them to prove to everyone that I'm good and um, I will make it I can't imagine the guys that you were playing with at that age had that pressure on them were you ever or did you ever feel like you would prefer not to have that pressure or were you, did you just accept it? I accepted it. Yeah. Uh, if I had the choice, maybe I would, I like pressure, but I wouldn't want pressure at that age. Right. But um, it's something that I had to accept. And it's something that my parents and my family put in me, made me understand very early that if this is the path I want to take, if I want to play football, this is what I'm going to go through till you're able to make your name on your own. But till then, this is what you're going through. So it's whether you're ready or not. And it's true, it's left or right. You can't, sometimes there are some things that's just there and you can't do nothing about it. You have to be able to to fight it and, and make sure that you make your own name. So that was my first, you know, my first objective was to be able to, to make my name. And then... I would have been already proud of myself because he, he set the bus so high that to get there was it's hard. <laughs> how um 
do you remember specifically how you did deal with that like what sort of stuff were you doing was it training or mentally um i think it was a lot mentally psyching myself up it was more mentally training well you do the normal training i was very young so you train with others and blah 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 but um i think mentally it was 90 percent mentally i was psyching myself up that this is what i want to do this is how i want it to be i don't want to come out of this game and let's say making people happy that i wasn't good or that i'm not i don't deserve to be my dad's son those kind of things so you it's not easy but in 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 africa and ghana people are really harsh when it comes to football they don't have manners no way so because we ghanaians we love this game so much that uh it's it's personal it becomes personal so you need to know how to deal with it and i I'm, yeah mentally i was that's i knew i was i was strong because i was never scared i was never scared to to deal with the pressure coming and i was able to to always tune my mind that this is what i want to do and this is how i want to do it and tomorrow this is what i want to happen that you know trying to give yourself already objective trying to give yourself uh like a no limits this is what i want to do this is what i want to do so every time asking yourself for more and bit by bit bum 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 i got to a point where everybody was saying oh, he will make it you know but it took time a lot of time and sometimes it was hard sometimes i had to go into my room and after when you're young 12 13 go into your room and you cry because of what people are saying outside but i'll never cry in front of them you know you go in your room and you come out again the next day and you go again and that was it because that's what i wanted to do and i had to go through that to to be able to to succeed it's quite unique that you talk about at a young age having targets and and setting yourself this is what i want to do tomorrow this is what i want to do this is what i need to do to get to here um i mean that's that's not common in in terms of young guys now i i, I can't imagine a lot of them do that looking back now do you think that was was an important part of your development as a player very very important and i think that also came to you i'm like i said i'm lucky due to my my dad the fact that he was playing football and he was already hard and he didn't respect age he never respected age in that kind of when it comes to football so like if you want to do that today if you do this then tomorrow you have to do this if you run 30 minutes at this level then tomorrow you have to run 40 minutes at this level and that's how it was you know every 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 day and um so i always had a challenge with myself high standards from, always, from an early age yeah always that was that was how my my dad was and he put it into us and you know took it in very young but i knew i wanted to play football i didn't have any other dream that was i think maybe younger people grow up and their dads maybe is a doctor is this and they have different dreams and like football also so they go and play football and but me as soon as i was 10 11 12 i didn't want to do anything i just wanted to play football so i had to go through what will make me become a professional footballer at the age of 16 which is still like incredibly young obviously you moved to marseille um 15 15 15 years old yeah. even younger yeah um and you know again you talk about your father he won the champions league at marseille so that was a big deal and 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 more pressure of being in an environment where your you know your father's reputation almost is 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 enormous um what was what was your ambition when you when you went there did did you have your own ambitions yeah i think um well uh could have gone to different academies that wanted me then um, but with the story the history and then the, the president of the club who was very very close to my dad may he so rest in peace Bob Juf um, was said no I have to come to Marseille there's no way that I'm going to go to another club so came things went well signed and then everything started from there but um, I remember coming there was 
straight away and I was in Africa. Okay, right, I used to come to Europe for holidays and blah, blah, blah. But I lived in Africa. My dad, after his career, was based in Ghana. So I used to come here for holidays, etc. But I didn't used to live here anymore. So, like, if I, oh, that's a very place, son, that's his son, that's his son, that's his son. So straight away already, everyone wants to see what he's going to do. You know, like, he's here now, but what's he going to do on the pitch, you know? And first months, first few months were hard, very hard. Mentally, far away from my family. I was in Ghana, I had a great life in Ghana. I was playing football, but my dad has a big house. We have a great life in Ghana. So coming here, you, you go into an academy life. You know, waking up in the morning, going to school, da da da, come back, training. It was it was quite tough and different for me. And I had to adapt. And that was, that was where everything everything started. Did you um growing up before you moved to Marseille, were you aware to obviously to become a professional and to, and to play at an elite level, you were gonna have to move uh, away. That that was yeah. something you're gonna have to do. Yeah. How did you feel about that? It was hard. Because, like I said, I had a, we've had a great life, and my dad and my parents gave us the best education and the best life that we could dream of. So, for me, you're leaving, you're leaving, you know, a comfortable zone, yeah. you know, a comfortable life to, to go and start yours, which is not even sure that you're going to make it. You know, that's the whole point. When you're in an academy, it's not sure you're going to make it, but it's what I wanted to do took the, the risk I knew that if I wanted to go because I started to realise when I was watching Premier League or French League etc when I was in Ghana I realised that players at 17, 18 were playing first team football not week in week out then now maybe a bit more but then like come in the game sign professional contracts few matches da 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 Champions League thinking wait if I'm 14, 15 and I'm not yet in Europe how am I going to be able at 18 to be there? That was my worry. Like that was what I was scared of, right? So I knew I had to leave. It was as simple as that. I knew I had to leave. And as soon as clubs got interested and the chance came, I took it <laughs> straight away. <laughs> you were, um, but you, you did make your debut at 18. So, so you were one 17. of those 17. It was 17. Yeah. Um, off with a with a year yeah, both sides yeah um, no problem. I mean seven, 17 years old is like if if that was the level obviously that you wanted to, to get to um, when you did that and obviously with all the pressure and uh, expectation that was on you um, was that a nice feeling to do that for, like you've spoken about how to that you wanted to um, to make your own name in the game like did you feel that like you were on your path to do that yeah it was great it was a great feeling. Um, I can remember it like it was yesterday. Go and describe it for me. Nah, it's, it's difficult to describe, let's be honest, but it's a feeling that no one, nobody can give give you that feeling. Nobody can, I think, understand what you're going through. But at that age, um, getting the biggest club in France, being able to get my debut at that age was incredible. I didn't believe my eyes already when I was going to sign my professional contract already was, was something big. But I was thinking like, okay, going to fight, da, 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 we'll see what's going to happen. Nah, nah, nah. And then, boom, went for preseason us and played well preseason. Because a lot of the first team players go internationals, right? So they come later. So you, you the younger ones, have the chance to play the first friendly games. And then things went well then. I more or less not stayed in the team, but stayed in the squad. I was among the, the squad and that's how things went. And I had my debut really, really early in the season. I think the third or fourth game or something. For me, it was, it was... I can't say like I've achieved... But I achieved my dream to play for Olympic Marseille. Players grow up having dreams to play for Real Madrid, Barcelona. My dream was to play for Marseille. You know, that's my dream. And so achieving my dream was 
that's for me outstanding and to today nothing can 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 replace that day and that feeling that the hard part was true hard work without knowing that the hardest was to come <laughs> and that was the, the the craziest thing that the hardest was to come was to be able to stay in the team and play and keep going and that was hard so you you spoke about uh, at the start of our conversation um different levels of expectation and how they change as you as you progress so yeah. i think probably the expectation on you at that point was you know is andre going to get in the team and now you've made your debut how did that expectation change um and were you aware of that um as soon as you make your debut already your status change as a person your status change um even the players in the squad see you a bit differently um you become very important for the academy players that are behind you that you, or your friends are 17 or my friends are playing in the second team on the 23s blah, blah. my friends were not the first team players they were my senior friend, like senior guys and um having that to do the first one then i'm like yeah but i want to have that feeling again yeah but i want to start a game yeah, then you start to want more want more want more and you start to you know keep going and working harder trying to understand what the coach wants you to do to be able to have a chance what and you just creep and creep and creep and creep and then you have little setbacks injuries or whatever or or a new coach coming in and doesn't like young players or doesn't want you and but you keep going 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 and I think it's just a matter of being ruthless, being just unstoppable in your head. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. At one point, then you kind of become unstoppable in 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 your kind of way because you're achieving your your aim, and you have only one thing in in mind is to get there, and you're ready to do anything possible mentally physically to be able to do it and most of the time if you're ready mentally you you will make it you will make it at that age did you have um do you have like a training routine or training habits um what sort of stuff were you doing uh, you know away from like team practices that were helping you um you know to progress at that age um I was quite young had um one of my personal trainers then not a lot of gym when I was young to be fair but a lot of technical work I did a lot of technical work after f- first team trainings passing movement ball control touches shooting I did a lot of that after after training sessions like club training session I did a lot of that cuz I wanted to to have something more than the others I wanted to have something as a young player to be always able to be in the squad as so I was working really hard physically then any time we used to run I used to be I think the highest runner in the in the in the team every time so I used to go like if I don't play really well today I'm going to run more than everyone I'm going to give everything everything so it's even still difficult for the manager to move me you know that kind of things and but like I said I was lucky because I had my uncles my dad etc who have played so you have different ideas that come into into you into 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 your brain or different ideas that they give you look at this point look at this look at that it's not every day you're going to have a great game but the day you're not having a good game you should push more to defensive da 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 or be smart try to get a goal on corners trying to find a way to to be important in that game so you know then you start to understand the game differently you start to learn but the the problem with that is you're learning you're learning but the expectations become more and more not only from yourself but from the people now because they realize that this guy is good and he's one of ours and he's the son of so you know it's so many things and you just have to be like okay let's go <laughs> and you keep going and you keep going and you keep going it's hard mentally but that's why it's like you asked me right now um, the fact that i could train outside 
with my coach technical i did a lot of technical work a little bit of physical but a lot of technical work and um i think he he made me jump the stages quicker it's interesting that you talk about um had knowing to do extra to get to the level that you wanted to be from a really early age um and i mean there's probably a lot of guys now at that age a little bit younger who just train what they're supposed to do. they go to their club training session and and, that, and that's it um do you have any advice for for those guys of of what to do as well as um to improve i think you need to to do more than the others if you want to get more than them it's as simple as that if you want to be more famous than them if you want to be if you want to to succeed more than them then you have to do more it's simple as that um but in in what we are now it's it's a different i think what 10 years ago when i was 20 it was different mentalities now it's a lot of social media a lot of a lot of bluff more than work you know what i mean and it's it's weird it's funny but when i'm talking about work is see a lot of people put in videos da 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 but that's not working working is not for people you need to work your what you need to work and if you're posting it hopefully you're really doing it you're not doing it to sh- show off show off that i'm doing something do you get what i mean because i can just make one shot one run and post it and everyone thought oh he was r- running the whole day but you you know what i mean so i think you just need to focus do what you have to do do your training especially if you're already a professional boy and you're young coming um the younger ones if you can if you have the chance or your parents can help you whether financially or whatever to get a personal trainer who's good to help you to jump the stages quicker yes it's it's very important but it's not also easy for everyone when you're young you know when you look at whether financially whether school or anything that's around it you don't know what it is so it's difficult to tell someone who's very young this that that you have to do because you see a kid telling his dad dad i need a personal trainer na 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 but the dad can't afford it you know what i mean so he has to find a way to train harder in another way it is what it is you know it's hard but it is what it is but those who are already professionals who are 16 17 18 getting there you need to work harder you need to i think you have certain qualities that you have naturally since you're young since you is there and you have some that you don't and i think you can work on everything physical technical tactical because i think tactical now is very very important in in this modern football you uh as well as marseille you were also playing loads of football internationally um you were the captain of a you know of a young ghana team that won the fifa world cup um they won the african youth championship which is incredible mm. um was the pressure that you were under different when you were playing for ghana than it was when you were at marseille or do people st- still expect a lot from you ghana is much more is more than in marseille it's ridiculous in ghana the pressure is something else yeah I think growing up um I never felt pressure before a game when I was in the dressing room I was always relaxed calm confident but when you have to wear that Ghana jersey it's different the weight on you is different the you feel it no player can no Ghanaian player can sit here and tell me that when he's coming to the national team and as soon as he gets into the bus to go to the stadium that feels okay i don't believe it you know it's something strong cuz ghana has this history in football this big players that has been in the country and big leaders and big guys who have made one trophies and so the and it's what we love and Ghana it's that's all football 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 
than politics, <laughs> but football. So everyone is focused on that. You know what I mean? And the pressure there is like when you're playing, everybody's watching. Everyone. You can't say whatever. Well, everyone and everyone is a coach. Everyone is this. Everyone is that. So the 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 pressure with Ghana is enormous, enormous, and that's where I know that because at the start when people used to say they're under pressure going to play a game, I never really it's like what are they talking about? You know, what's this pressure? But when the, for the beginning when I was going to start, especially with Ghana for my first years, it was. Because they demanded a lot from me, and they were hard with me, harsh with me. The media, the it was very difficult. It was very difficult for me to to make Ghanaians accept who I am and my my power on the pitch. It was difficult, but it was a name for me. It was I'm the kind of guy that likes to change people's mind and. I did it and I'll keep doing it and I'll make sure that I'll bring a trophy for my people. That's that's what they're waiting for me to do. But to talk about international football and Marseille or Swansea or, you know, West Ham, it's the kind of pressure is another level. And that, it's, it's just what it is. <laughs> Was it... Um so at that young age, feeling like having success with the national team, like it, it, was that a big deal at the time? So now, we're the first African country to win the Under-20 World Cup. Still the first, only African country. So shows how big it is. And it was something enormous in the country when we got back from the World Cup. The whole country was outside. It's something that I can never, never forget. And we'll never forget. And the squad, my players, my friends, we're all together. We, ah, oh, it's it's a little, little nice family to be fair. And you know, we did something that marked Ghanaians, but most importantly, Africa put Africa back on top in the youth twenty tournament at that time because it never happened. And um, that gave me um, hope. That gave me another dream, and that and that gave me some credit, much more credibility with all the Ghanaians. Because being the leader of the uh, being the captain of the the side who won the African Cup and the World Cup. That's never happened. Gave them, okay, we're a bit harsh on him now. Let's let's support him a bit more. Let's be behind him a bit more. Maybe he can do better things in the future. And that's, I think that was the turning point where Ghanaians started to give me their, their heart and start to give me everything that I needed to to grow up as a, as a player in the international level, even though they're still harsh with me. But... I know that it's not harsh because of anything. It's harsh because we've, we lack a trophy for so many years now and that it's, everything just gets everyone in nervous. So, but that time, the U20 tournament changed, changed everyone's perception in Ghana about me. That's a fact. Yeah. That must have been a nice feeling. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Um, back... During your time in Marseille, I've, like you, you spend a couple of seasons uh, on loan, mm -hmm. and this, I think it was the second season you were promoted, weren't mm -hmm. you, to the mm -hmm. obviously to, to League uh, One, mm -hmm. and that must have been nice that you were, you know, that you were being successful. You are in a successful team. You were scoring goals at, at club level, even despite maybe that it was uh, like not with Marseille. But that period of time must have made you feel like you know, I'm on the right path to, to becoming an, an, you know, a top player. That was an important part of my career. Very. Because um, I was having little game time on Marseille then. Um, I was coming on, sometimes start. Then I got the chance to go to the national team. I had the chance to play in the African Cup of Nations 
at the senior levels when I was what, 18, 17, 18. And I realized that I wanted to keep my spot in the national team. And then when I look at the national team, Michael Lestian, Suleiman Tari, Stephen Apia, Samoa Jan, like John Mintz, it's <laughs> ridiculous players are all over the pitch. And how am I going to be in the squad if I don't play? Then and after the whole season, I decided to go on loan. First one went really well. And Lorient had about 28, 29 games out of 38. Scored a few. Went well, but didn't start those 28. I think I started about 14 or something. Came on a bit. But then I was 18, 19. So, but I was in a hurry. Because I want, I never, I never wanted a call-up to come from the Ghana national team and I'm not in because of game time. It's not something I could live with because I tasted it and I didn't want to come out of it, you know? So then came back to Marseille, went on another loan, second division, because I wanted to play every game. That's a fact. And then they went really, really, really well. Really well. Um, coach there, Stefan, the guys there, like... It's, I think, one of my best seasons, not only on the pitch, but I mean off the pitch, the squad, the lads, the whole thing in my career till today. It's, it's great guys. Um, we we achieved something great. Then when we got to the Prem, uh, that's when I went to Marseille. So, you Did know. you realise before that season, or even obviously sat here now, you said, oh, that was really important to you that you did that? Did you realise how important it was going to be before? Um, because, I mean, uh, if we obviously include other people listening and, and other players playing, sometimes a loan can be seen as, as a negative experience or can be seen as something that they don't want to do. But you're say, talking about it as being something really special. I think a loan has to benefit you and the club. Um, some loans are not beneficial because the player is here to get some minutes. And he's not getting those minutes. So I don't know if I'm a Marseille player and I come on loan to, to uh, I don't know, Alavignon or Lorient and I don't get the minutes. Then let me, uh, let me be a Marseille and not get the minutes. I'm training with the best players in the country, the best players, some of the best in the world. Why should I leave there, come to a lower team and not play? But you have to de deserve your place you know, even in the lower team to play. So it's, it's for me, it's positive when you're young and you don't have the chance to get minutes at your club. But it depends on also how the club wants to deal with you, how the club wants to, the plan, the manager and the people have for you, you know, and that's also very important because a manager can make you and break you. That's how it is. And then, so it's important that a young player knows that he has to know his plan and also try and see through what the plan they have for him. And if he goes on loan, if it's especially the big clubs and you go on loan and you you do, you have to go there and do your job. And as soon as you do your job, you're coming back with more power, more experience, more... You're naturally a bigger player. And you also realise the luck you have of being in that big club when you go down there and realise how it is there and come back and you're like, I'm going to do everything to stay here. You know, <laughs> and, and that's, I think that's very important for young, younger players to understand that it's never easy. Nothing's easy. You need to go look for it. And some players will not go on loan in the big club and pum 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 and they play some has to go three four five loans some have to go change club and they it works elsewhere everyone's road is different but to as long as you have your aim your dream you're ready to sacrifice anything for that i always believe you'll make it that's my belief you make it um in those two years, or the next two seasons of Marseille, were incredibly successful. Yeah. Um, I mean, you were a, an enormous part of that. Um, they, you know, you won the league both years, you won the cup both years. Um, was, did you really start to feel then like a, that 
you were a an, you know top of, top of the game elite player yeah. um that you know he must have felt good yeah then i knew that i'm there playing champions league playing world cup playing yeah now you couldn't lie i, I was there <laughs> how did the uh how did the we're talking about um you know pe- expectation and pressure mm-hmm. how did that change from when you're a young player um, trying to prove to everybody that you were good enough. So now people know that you're good enough. You're, you know, you're playing at the top, top level. Um, and the expectation every game now is for you to perform. How difficult it was it, you know, did the pressure change? Um, I think it was a different sort of pressure. It wasn't to prove people anymore that I'm Andre and I'll be able to, to make my own name or I can make my own name. It was the pressure of a high level team the pressure of a team that wants to win every week in, week out. A team that gives you a contract, gives the players contracts with a lot of money When I, at, at a young age because they want to win. They're not giving you the contract because you're nice. So you, the pressure becomes different because you've become an important part of the team as a young, very young player. And you, you players around you are 30, 32, 33, 34, big names. And you're among them in meetings and da, da, da. And you're the baby who they saw you two years ago going up and down loan, blah, blah, blah. So changes. And now you have to prove that I'm worth my new deal. I'm worth being among, when they're talking about the best players of the club, I'm worth being in there. I have to make sure that in the Champions League, I prove that I can play and play well in the Champions League. I have to. It's it's a different different ball game. It's it, it, you forget about all this, my dad and da, 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 da. that's now like I I broke that. That was gone. So now I had to. Can I be among the best African players? That's the next one, and that was how I got there. How did you? So what sort of stuff were you, were you doing to to do that? A lot of, first of all, Marseille was, we were playing every three days kind of thing. So we had a lot of games. We had a lot, a lot of games. Every three days, Champions League or Europa League or so. So a lot of treatment, taking care of myself. Couldn't do a lot of personal training then to be fair at that period couldn't do a lot of personal training but could do more core little things but a lot of it was more mental work it was now it was all about being fit because i was young i still need to progress but i'm playing week in week out so you can't really work in training how you should be as a 20 year old or 21 year old but you need to progress so I was progressing a lot by videos. Didier Deschamps, the coach then, was filming me everything, every detail of my game, De- every detail of my game, this, that, 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 that. Every day, every two days, we had a video, had a video. When we go training, I want you to do this, I want you to do that, I want you to play like that. So I was lucky. Like I said, the manager can make you and can break you. He covered me, protected me, and made me get to where I had to get by, re- by showing me every single thing he had to, to, you know, to show me in every detail, mentally, how he used to speak to me. This is what you need to do. This is how you need to do. Now you're here. Now you need to get here. Now you're there. You need to get here. Now, you, need, you know, it, it was more like I wasn't even setting my goals anymore at that particular point. He was setting them for me. So telling me, you can be there. Why are you here? I want you there. I want you. There's no age. There's no age. And then I kept going. So it was a lot of mental work, individual work and trying to stay, to stay fit. I think what's quite interesting there is, is what you talk about um, being fit and playing all these games, especially at the moment when, especially this season, the, the schedule has been pretty relentless. Um, so there might not be a period of time that, you know, that now the norm to, to be better is to seem to do more and I've got to do extra after training and forget that being involved in a match day and playing is actually the most important thing. So if you don't have the time to train extra 
actually spend the time recovering and making sure you, that you're fit to play is, is really important. I think that's that's quite interesting that you've, you've said that. It's very important. Sometimes the best form of training is resting. And when I was younger, maybe I didn't understand it too much, but today, 30, 31, you understand it in a different manner. You, you get certain things. That doesn't mean that you, you have to train. And sometimes you have to train really hard, but... There are sometimes where your body needs to recover because even a machine needs to to get reset. <laughs> you know what I mean. So you need to recover and to be able to to deliver and to deliver again. And as long as you you know your body, you know what is good for you, and that's what's important for a player. You need to know what's good for you. And as soon as you know what's good for you, then you see that you've done fifty percent of the of the work. To be fair. Your manager at the time, you obviously speak about him, you know, with such high regard. Was there anything, was there any like long lasting information or advice that he gave you during that period of time that, that stays with you now? Yeah, just always said, be yourself, work as hard as you can and you always be a top player because you have it in you. Well, no matter the circumstances, no matter where you find yourself, whether in the greatest club, whether in a difficult situation, you are who you are and you just need to keep always going and keep proving people wrong every time every time and that's you and that's me and i realized that anytime i got into my career i was always like that i always had that feeling like they don't regard me to where i should or they don't see me where i should be and i always have to prove people wrong and prove people wrong and keep going and it is what it is you know i, I enjoy it at the, to be fair <laughs> i enjoy it now when um so when the opportunity arose to to come to Swansea first of all, what was your understanding of the Premier League at the time, and and what was your ambition uh, before that move? Um, to be honest, uh, I was the boy who wanted to be like the Toti I must say. I didn't want to move. Uh, that was my dream, growing up, and but. It, then the the owner may so rest in peace died then things changed at the club there was no more money there was no more etc so he couldn't follow up with um whether the wages whether um the club's uh ambition bringing players and we all we all left that season well, about 10 11 players after the bielsa season at marseille we all left so then if i'm not in marseille i have to go to england I always had, don't get me wrong, I always was thinking behind my back, I'd like to play in the Premier League. It's a dream to play in the Premier League, but I'm a Marseille and my dream is Marseille. You know what I mean? So it's it was a 50-50 thing, but when things went that way, we all understood that we had to leave. You know, we had to leave and... Swansea came up, few clubs came up, different countries, blah, blah, blah. But Swansea came up and the style of play, the the idea of being in the Prem was was big for me, especially for Ghanaians because that's what they love. So could have gone Italy, could have gone Germany, could have, but the Ghanaians wanted to see me in England. For them, if I'm leaving Marseille, I have to go to England. So I needed to look at the club where I would would go with my style that would be okay in every sort of ways so i looked at everything and with swansea everything went well quick sharp in in a few days i was done and i came over and really really enjoy 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 here to be fair the was a was a premier league different how was it different to um, physically to the French League? Yeah, physically. So I had to adapt and work harder phys physically to be stronger. That that was important. And I think the games in the Prem was so intense that you needed to be to be ready for that to 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 keep going and keep going and keep going. And I went, you know. I was lucky I had the whole preseason here, so got a bit a taste of it in the preseason games and blah blah blah. And as soon as I started playing, got used to the rhythm. Was working really hard off the pitch, to be fair, with our personal training, because it was one 
then there was no more Champions League or Europa League because I left Marseille. So now it's playing Saturday, Saturday most of the time, and I could work in the middle of the week, physical training, um, agility work, explosive work. Where my trainer used to come from France and was working a lot and had a very good season. To be fair, <laughs> that was. I mean, yeah, you did have a very good season, um, and I don't think Swansea fans will. Um, will hate me for saying that that year that they were, you know, they they sort of were uh, trying to become established in the Premier League. They were they were underdogs in in most games that, that they played. Um, what was that like being involved in a team um, that maybe wasn't expected to win? That you'd gone from obviously expecting to win every game um, to people being happy if you did win a game, if that makes sense. I get, um, I get, I get what you mean. How, how, like, what, what was that like going from one environment to to another? It was weird, not weird. Like, the club is not ambitious because we had players who were very ambitious. Ashley Williams, Sigurdsson, Gomez, Shelby, the key. These are guys who wants to win every every weekend. Let's get. <laughs> let, let me be honest. And I think that's why Swansea was was there for those years because they had guys who who were men. Who wanted to to let the club be be as high as it, it could, but it's true that you know um, when you're at Marseille, then Marseille is let's say the United or the City in you know, Liverpool in in France with Lyon and and Paris. People expect you to to win every week. So now come in, you're like you're going to the game. Okay, so that means expect expectations is a little less from when you're playing at Liverpool or when you're playing at Chelsea or when you're playing at Arsenal, it's like, if you win, we're on fire. We, we, and I had to adapt to to that feeling. I had to adapt to not winning every week. If, because I must say, I lost one week, it was the end of the world. You know, you lose a game, it's the end of the world. And here, it's like you lose, it's like, stay calm, calm, no problem. Fans are okay. Just go work and we win the next one, you know, calm down focused on the next game so it was more like you had time to digest the defeat which is better to be fair <laughs> this, is, this is which is better because you have time to digest it and take a deep breath and go again you know you lost you know you haven't done well you know you want to win so but in them clubs Marseille is like and the whole week you switch on the TV Marseille lost da, 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 Marseille lost Marseille lost Marseille. It's, it's like it's just there so it's you, it's difficult to get it all, out of you. But Swansea losing versus Manu, maybe people be like, okay, mm. Manu beat Swansea. And we, I learned that, but we did not accept it as a team. We were not, we didn't care if it was Man United or Chelsea or Liverpool or whatever. We went onto the pitch to, to, to win because we had quality and character for that in that group of, of squad and, I enjoyed myself so much because we were all believing ourselves that we were big players. We all told ourselves that we are big players. So we need to to make sure that we, we show it not only versus maybe the teams who are struggling in the relegation battle, but to make sure we show it even with the ones on top there and, and we're able to do it. I think that's I think that's really interesting that you, you've come to a, an environment where maybe the pressure is probably the least that you've ever had from the outside, but the pressure you put on yourself to perform and to show everybody that you were, you know, a top premiership player um, became more because of the outside pressure was off. That's, yeah. that's something that's obviously like the top elite that's players. Easy. I mean, for anybody listening or, or watching to this, that if, if you want to get to the top level, you've got to share that sort of personality. That, that's pretty important. Very. I think it's very important. You have to have self-belief build that fire in you you know build that fire as soon as you lose the fire you're 50 percent less you know good player 100 percent. but that fire in you you have to build it you have to make your goals and every body situation is different when i mean in football so clubs or injuries or whatever everyone's situation is different but look at your situation and make the most out of yours you know what i mean and get ready to work for for yourself for your family 
when you do that to your best, then you're helping your team. So I think find the thing that motivates you, what really makes you want to play football. Why do you want to play? Is it just the passion? Some people wake up and say, no, there's a lot of money on football now. I want to, I want to be a footballer. Or, okay, but if it's the money, but if that's your motivation and that's going to be making you run and work and go, so be it. But find your motivation to, to make you, some is the passion, some is, is the glory, some is the fame. Everyone has his own, but you need to find your motivation. And we then found our motivation by, I felt that we all felt we were big players. Never, no one ever said it out of their mouth. But when you look at the body language, when you look at Ashley Williams coming in, Routledge coming in, you had Norton, Kofi, Key, John Joe Shelby. You know, we, we believed we were big players. So we, we, we didn't fear anybody. And we, we came with a lot of pride and our chest was always high. We had big ego on the squad. And that's where I think we took us to, to, to get those kind of performances against the big teams. I mean, it certainly helped in, in your respect because you end up moving to West um, for a club record fee at that time. Um, I mean, the, that is obviously an example of, of your own mentality of being able to push you onto a new level. When you sign a, a club for a record fee, what sort of, we're talking about the shift of pressure from one situation to another. What pressure are you now under off the back of that? And, and how did you feel? No, you're in the limelight, Clearly. You're the one in the line of the club because you're the record I mean, because you. your good play has, has pushed you in, into that position. Yeah. So now you're in the real limelight and they're waiting to see what you're going to do here. So the West Ham fans are expecting, the world is expecting, Ghana is expecting, the Premier League is expecting to see what Andre is going to do. And, you know, you you can go under a lot of pressure. I was I was okay with it, but I was very unlucky when I got there. My first game got injured. For a very long time but uh sure that that move was was a good move um big club big fan base and then you know a little i really wanted to make it work there but it was sometimes you go somewhere and it gets to a point where you feel like it's not meant to be no, that is not going to work, but you just feel like I'm working hard, never get injuries. All of a sudden I'm getting injuries every time. Da, 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 da. Maybe it's not meant to be. And honestly, when Billich left also gave me, it wasn't the same again. Like, because yeah, everything was not always right for me. And some people tell me I wasn't patient enough because I had a bad injury, but you know, I wanted to come back and straight away, bam, 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 bam. I think I did well, not bad at West Ham. Could have done much more if there was no injuries in between. But I just felt like it wasn't right. I was doing the same training, same stuff, but I was getting injuries that I never had before. And it just kept kept me doubting. And till then, I never doubted in myself. So when I you start to doubt in your head, What's going on? I'm always getting injuries. I'm not 100% fit. I'm da, 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 da. Then you start to think and then doubt comes into your head and you have to be strong then. And then you need to be strong and make the decision that you think will be good for you to try and get back to that confident level where nobody could, could stop you in your head. You know what I mean? And that's was what was important for me and but you know it was a great time at West Ham still have friends there and uh, you know like I said Billich left uh, it wasn't the same again for me I'm talking personally it wasn't the same again for me and I just didn't feel like it was the place for me for me to be I wouldn't say I didn't feel at home because the players around and people made me feel good but it was just like a player who's played in different clubs 
international blah 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 you never have those injuries you never have. i just felt like it wasn't meant to be there and i left so when i left west ham i didn't have an injury for two three years funny enough <laughs> i am um, i think i know the answer to this question but the to give people an example of, of your elite mentality and, and why you were so successful is when you move um to a club that's seen as obviously a, like a, a great move a lot of money um, how long do you spend feeling good about yourself and how quickly do you change that mindset to oh, I've got to work hard again? I don't even think you have time to feel good about yourself. I thought so. Yeah, I don't think you have time to feel good about yourself because you know what you're doing, I think. I think you always feel good about yourself when you finish and you watch the highlights of a game and you see what you've done in the game. I think then you're home feeling good. You feel like, played well today like what I did I think that's when you really feel feel good you know but um for me no I didn't really have time to to focus on that to think about the record signing I didn't have time for that mm -mm. just went boom boom moved signed played a game five, five game five days later injury for four months or five months you know so it was a quick quick turnover let's say but i think um as a person as a player you need to be able to face when it's hard um if you can't deal with it when it's hard when you're down there when everyone is you know when you know the worst thing about i think football or elite sports and with the media and everything around it you have so much positive but you also have negative and when the negative stuff's coming is that when you're going down, you have no one trying to pull you up. They're trying to even make you go deeper. And that's when you have to be, you have to be strong and you have to be able to come out of there. And that's when your family comes into play. Parents, kids, wives. Th that's when all those things become very important to you as a, as a, as a person because you realize that... I'm going down here, but no one is helping me when you read the news, uh, when you read maybe the paper, the, ah, he's not, he's this, he's that, record fee signing, ah, da, 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 da. You're like, okay, okay, it's becoming tough here. Da, da, da. Then anything you do, they don't want to see it positive because they just have a negative image already. So that's what is staying on you and you have to be able to change it. And I was able to do that. I was even at West Ham before I left. I was able to do that, and I I can say West Ham fans will not say Andre was the best player we had because things didn't go. But um, when after the injury and things, I came back, scored a few goals, bum bum bum, and fans were were happy with me, and you know things started to get good, better, and then another injury, and then I like. <laughs> yeah, it's getting it's tough then, but you need to stay and stay focused and keep going and for me it was tough that was the first time I faced adversity in my career and that was I was what 26 maybe and I've played everything <laughs> when I was 26 I played everything so I do understand why I should suffer or why I should find it difficult now I think my ego was touched a lot and I had to double up and work harder and it, it, how difficult was that period of time like you've just said you, you you had an enormous amount of success from a, an early age and and almost looked like you just continued to have success yeah. you, you suffer a couple of injuries which um which makes it difficult for you to to play at you know the level that you set yourself um for people who do i mean i've suffered a lot myself um for people who do ended up you know injured out for for short long periods of time in, in your experience, how can they help themselves to, to get back to the level that they were? One, you need to be strong mentally, first of all. I think you need to be strong mentally. And you need to get to it right, get the treatment right, try and get the best physios, the best doctors, whatever it is, to get it right. Because if it's not right, you cannot be who you were before. I don't think it's possible, you know, and you need time. So... 
if you've been injured for seven months or eight months, don't think that after eight months you come back and you're the same. It's not possible. Even though people are going to demand the same, fans are going to demand the same, your manager's going to demand the same, but it's not possible. Just human nature. It's not possible. So that's what I think people need to put into players' mind. The reality of it is that if you have been injured for six months, globally, it's a year. Because you need six months to get back to your normal shape or whoever you are. So it's it's little things that I think um, players, younger ones, need to know that some players get injuries really young. And maybe are the great players and they can't even make it because of their injury. And give up. And that's where I, I, I agree that the injury can make you make steps back. And it's hard to come back and it's hard to I understand that. And I agree with that with anyone because I've seen it. I've experienced it, that injuries, you know, made me ask myself, what's going on here? But I don't accept when you give up. I don't accept it. I, it doesn't go with me. It doesn't stick with me. And if you're a player and you want to achieve and you can't deal with, Difficulties, whether it's injuries, whether it's a gaffer not putting you a gaffer, letting you stay at home on the weekend or whatever, and you give up, you're never going to make it. Because even those who are even at another level than me, who are higher than me even, are being criticised, are suffering with injuries, are suffering with whatever, and they keep going. And they are even enjoying more fame, more anything than me or than someone. So why should I look another way? I need to keep going. So I think the young ones need... So always keep going, keep going, keep going. It's hard. You're injured, get your treatment sorted, take your time, get ready. It's it's process, it's progress. It's, you know, you come back and you keep going. But I also came back from injury at West Ham and I came quicker than I should. Forgetting that I'm the record signing and all the fans are waiting for me to, to shine. But I can't. <laughs> Not because I don't want to, but my body is not letting me do it for a period of time, then you are able to show. But for that period of time, you're receiving criticism and you're starting to doubt yourself, but it's not your ability, it's not your quality, it's not, it's just that your body is not ready yet to to perform at that level because you've been out for a long time. So it's things that I learned also and I took it good to become... I think a better player now, especially mentally. And I use that to, to forge me for the next years to come. The, uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, I know I've, you know, watched the load of Swansea games this year that, that you should be playing in the Premier League. I've I think, you know, I think that's, that's quite obvious. Um, but now you're obviously an incredibly important player, um, at Swansea, um, you know, the best, if not one of the best players in, in the championship. Um, you know, you're also the Ghana captain. You're, what you're expected to do at the moment and the pressure obviously has moved again to be in a, such a, an important part of every team that you're in. Um, how can you describe for people how that feels um, and what sort of pressure you might be under every game, every day to to you know, to create an environment where people are uh, on your level and that you're trying to get to the level where you should be? Good one. <laughs> it's a good one. I think um, it's, first of all, this is a personal point of view. Um, I feel proud to be important everywhere I've been or everywhere I've been. It's for me, it's, it means a lot. Because it's different managers, it's different tactics, it's different style of play, different players in the dressing room, and you being be being able to be important. And most of all the clubs I've been at, it's it's for me great, and proves me a lot of my mentality, of my quality, and etc. But um, beside that, being here. Uh, club which I really really feel at home I really really love the fans um, 
I'm home here and um and when I wear the Swansea jersey I feel like it's something personal. It's I have a different vibe. You know when I wear the Marseille jersey I used to wear it as a fan, you know, as a young fan who is achieving his dream so you have something different and and to be fair with Swansea it came along the line it's not something that as soon as i came to swansea i was the biggest fan of swansea but i learned it you get what i mean i was happy straight away they made me feel at home things went on well and i learned to become like one of them it is what it is i'm not going to lie and sit here as soon as i sign i was a jackami and they loved me i loved them no it, it was something that came with came quick came quick but it came with time I must say it was I was a fan of Marseille when I was growing up so it was just normal. So having that power to be able to have a lot of let's say a lot of um influence in the dressing room or in all the places I've been whether in the pitch or, or off the pitch for me has been for me great you know and I've grown up with that and being the leader of my national team etc so trying to set up um that mentality in a dressing room to win games it's not easy it's hard because we have a lot of young players here and different with different plans different movement now like i said the the mentalities have changed it's not the same is that you can change it it's a fact it's not the same and a lot of the younger ones have a lot of agents around them da 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 so sometimes they lose a lot of confidence cuz their agents don't make them feel good or whatever or sometimes they think that they're bigger than what they are so it's it's that or that but forgetting that most importantly it's the group and if everyone can keep growing individually on the pitch and off the pitch it will make us a better team so for me the target always in Swansea has been trying to go up it's true that the club has not you know has it lost a lot of players in the past few years and it's 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 hard to take for for me as a player for the fans um but um we we are building something here and we've built something here in the past 2 years which i think has a bright future and needs to keep going because you have this kind of people routledge norton me myself bennett um guys who have also been at the highest at the highest level and seen different sort of players and seen different things i've been here for a very long time so i think we try to set up a mentality not only for the young ones but even for ourselves because if you want to be if i want to tell someone something and i want him to listen to me if i don't be an example on the pitch or of the pitch how is he going to listen to what i'm saying it's it is it, it that's how it is so to 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 quite be sure it's just for me great to to have all all this you know um experience in my career and be able to bring it to to this younger ones now it's true i want to go back to the highest level that's my mentality then i'm lying I, <laughs> if i don't go back to the highest level for me or that field you know i need to go back to the highest level personally i love with swansea you yeah? know but that's what i mean is it's just who i am but i had this thing in me that I wanted to make sure that I can do everything for Sonzi to come back and that's also my personal pride ego or whatever that drives me into into ambitions into objectives so I'm going to do everything possible to make sure we try and go up and then work harder again to to do more in the future <laughs> um We're going to finish uh Andre with some quick fire questions. I'm just going to bat them at you and um and see where we go. Um 
but number one is your best moment in football. And there's been a lot, so it's diff difficult to pick one. I'll say winning the under-20 World Cup. Yeah. Um, your worst moment? Football. When I lost the African Cup final with Ghana. Um, the best player you've played with? Best player I've played with? I've played with a few. Huh? Ben Arthur. Ben Arthur, yeah. Best player you've played against? Thiago Silva. Biggest regret, if if any? No. None. Um, best advice you've ever received? Always be yourself. Keep being yourself. Don't try to be someone for someone or be yourself and work work better. The best atmosphere you've played in? Fenerbahce, Marseille, Velodrome, Fenerbahce. Velodrome is my home, so it's the best stadium. But let's say noise. Yes, between the two. Yeah. Marseille. Yeah, yeah they're pretty good. Fenerbahce pretty good is, to choose from. Ridiculous. <laughs> um, what piece of advice would you give to a young Andre Ayo? I think I gave him already that advice. <laughs> <laughs> but I would maybe say... Uh, Maybe be less, when I was young, be less less in a hurry to succeed. Be a bit patient, yeah. I mean, on the flip side of that, do you, that elite mentality that you have, though, has, has led you to so much success that True. it's difficult to... It's difficult to, yeah. Um, your current career ambition? Promotion with Swansea. Get back to playing at the highest highest level. International and World Cup coming, a lot of a lot of things coming. Yeah. Need to be very ready. Okay. <laughs> uh, and last last one, mate, is um, the best advice to give to young players who want to become professional footballers. Never give up. Your dream is always a dream that could be doable if you give everything that you have. And whether it's going wrong or going bad, never give up until the last moment even the last moment keep going very powerful uh, Andre thank you you're an incredible guy incredible thank career thank you so much I really appreciate your time thank you you're welcome thank you. yeah. guys thank you so much for listening I hope you enjoyed that episode with Andre Ayo as much as I did and have some lessons and takeaways to put into your game and try at training tomorrow remember to subscribe like and review this show via your podcast channel and press the bell button so you never miss a release if you're watching us on YouTube. Head to the ePerform website for even more football-specific information and subscribe to our mailing list to get all the best actionable advice straight to your inbox for free. I'm Joe Partington. See you soon.